Here we're going to focus on two particular quantum numbers. The principal quantum number, which is n, and the orbital angular momentum, which is l. And we talk about these two in particular because uh, these two quantum numbers by themselves gives us the most information about the electron. And so when we talk about electrons, typically we uh, talk about them in terms of n and l, and this is going to be called the orbital subshell. So this is gonna tell us most of the information that we really need for electrons as we go forward in general chemistry is, and this is going to be the n and the l value. So n, the principal quantum number, uh, remember the rules say this can be uh, any positive non-zero integral value. What you need to remember is that n is related to the distance of the electron to the no nucleus. So as n increases, our electron gets further away from the nucleus. And also you need to remember that as n increases, the energy of that orbital, the, the energy that that electron has is also going to de decrease because it's getting a further away from the positive charge. So this n value was the same n value that we saw in the Bohr atom, and it's related to stationary states. And remember that these stationary states are also related to the fact that electrons have waves. So they're very defined. Remember, um, they are quantized. So that's why we need to use an integral value. We can't have an n value of, say, 1.5 it needs to be um, a whole number. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, things like that. So n in itself tells us what shell the electron is and how far it is away from our nucleus. So that's pretty important information. Uh, the orbital angular momentum defines what type of orbital that, we're, that we are discussing. So there are different types of orbitals, and these different types of orbitals are going to have different properties. And, and, and so in giving these two pieces of information, we pretty well describe the orbital in itself. So we say n, how far is that electron away from the nucleus, and l, what kind of orbital are we talking about? So a given subshell um, can contain multiple orbitals. So for a given quantum number or a shell, so n is equal to, say, 3, there can be different types of orbitals in, involved in that uh, shell. Remember that the possible L values are determined by n. So L can be any um, zero or positive integer, but remember it cannot be larger than n minus one. So this is an important rule. So we will apply this a little bit more later, but as an example, if I was to tell you that uh, for an electron, the electron had an n value of 2, and I said, what are the possible L values for that, that electron? It would be 0 or 1. So you start at 0, you keep adding 1 to it, so you go to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, until you get to n minus 1. n minus 1 in this case is 1, so when n is equal to 2, my possible L values are 0 or 1. And really what we're saying by saying our um, possible L values are 0 or 1 are these are the two types of orbitals that we can have when we are in the second stationary state or in the second uh, shell of our um, atom that we're discussing. Technically, there are four types of orbitals or four types of orbital subshells, if you want to call them that. And here we're going to start um, really shifting away from calling them uh, orbital subshells are just orbitals, and these are, remember, where electrons live uh, at. Technically, there should be an infinite value of them, but in reality, when we look at the periodic table, there are really only four uh, orbital subshells. And you'll see why here in a little bit, um, instead of discussing orbital subshells in terms of their L value, we assign them a letter, and this is going to uh, make things a little bit easier uh, down the road when we uh, discuss uh, the, the orbitals themselves. So when L is equal to zero, the orbital that we're dealing with is called S. When L is equal to one, it's P. L is equal to two is D. L is equal to three is F. So these are the different types of orbitals that we can have inside of an atom. So each one of these orbitals have different shapes, different properties, and things like that. Um, so one of the things that we can point out, because the L value is determined by the N value, really what we're saying is, is that as the N value increases, we have the possibility 
of more types of orbitals. So as the n value increases, the number of different types of orbitals also increase. So if we look at the basic rule, um, I can have n values, say one, two, three, four, remember it needs to be an integer value. Based off of our rule uh, for determining L values, if n is equal to one, we can only have one possible L value, zero. If n is equal to two, our possible L values are zero and one, three is zero, one or two, and four is zero, one, two, and three. And what we've learned now is these L values really correspond to a type of orbital. So when we are in the first stationary state or first um, energy level away from a nucleus, there can really only be one type of orbital, S. So when we get to the second n value, I can have an S or P orbitals are, are, are possible. When I get to the third n value, I can have S, P, or D, and with the fourth n value, it could be S, P, D, or F. And a really a way to think about this, and uh, this is pretty true, that as uh, atoms get larger, their bonding becomes more complex because they have more types of orbitals involved. And so we're going to find out that these orbitals are directly related to the bonding that atoms uh, undergo when we make uh, molecules. Let's look at these orbitals a little bit more and kind of define them. Uh, really what you need to know at this point is that each orbital uh, has a distinctive shape and a position around the atom. And remember that these orbitals really come from uh, Schrodinger's equation and they're really just a probability of where electrons are going to live at. So they, uh, really what they have is, is it's, it's a probability shape and it just says that these ele this electron wants to live inside of this particular uh, probability shape in itself. One of the other things we need to understand is that uh, some of these orbitals have what's called a node and a node is where the probability density is zero. So there's a space inside of the orbital where uh, technically electrons cannot live. And it's something that we define, and so I will point these out. And um, different orbitals have different numbers of nodes. Some of them don't have nodes. And uh, technically, we should never find an electron there. But uh, you know, this is kind of a complex theory. So an s orbital has zero nodes. P orbital has one. D orbital has two. F orbital has three. So when we look at the shapes of these, and there's more to this about orbitals. They have directions um, in themselves. This is all stuff that we're going to cover later. Really, you just need to understand what the basic shape is and what does it represent. So an s orbital is actually spherical. So if we have the atom, it would be in the middle. And this is more of what uh, people would comprehend in terms of something orbiting something else. So like the, the moon going around the Earth kind of has a spherical shape to it. So this is saying where the electrons live inside of our s orbital the, in the center would be our, our atom. And so this kind of makes sense. Um, where things get a little bit more complex is when we look at a p orbital. So a p orbital actually looks like an infinity sign. And we see this first node. So remember a node is where the probability density is zero. So this is the node right here inside of a p orbital. You can see it has these two uh, different colors involved with it. So we'll, we'll talk about that. That's just the sign of the orbital. And that will come into play more when we start talking about um, uh, bonding using these particular, particular orbitals. So p orbitals actually have directions. We really don't need to understand that right now. But uh, when we talk about bonding, it will become more important. And so we'll deal with it then. Um, as we uh, get to different orbitals, their shapes become more complex. D orbitals actually have uh, two basic types of shapes. Um, many of them look like two crossed um, uh, infinity signs. And so here you can see the two nodes that a D orbital has. So one uh, node from this infinity sign and one node from uh, this infinity sign. So it's almost like we've taken a sphere and cut it down two different lines. So that's what we mean by a node. Um, some other d orbitals sort of have uh, this shape. Um, it looks like an infinity sign with a uh, with a circle going through the middle of it. And like I said, these are going to have certain directions and they're going to have more information with it, but we don't really need to cover that right now. We will get to that later on when we, we start talking about the bonding that involves d orbitals. 
Um, some classes may expect you to actually memorize these shapes, um, but in reality you don't need to understand that right now to be able to understand uh, the bonding that we are going to be discussing later on um, in this textbook. F orbitals in themselves, it's important to understand that there are F orbitals, but um, to, um, usually we don't talk about the bonding involved with F orbitals, so I'm going to skip over that. So F orbitals do have defined shapes, but they are only really used in elements that we don't usually talk about in uh, general chemistry. So orbitals having the same in and out value are considered a part of the same um, subshell. So by giving the N and L value for an electron, I've given you most of the information that we really need to understand the chemistry of that electron. Remember, N tells me how far the electron is away from the nucleus. It gives me information about the energy level of that electron. And L tells me what kind of orbital that we are looking at. So when we discuss electrons, even though there's four quantum numbers, we typically talk about electrons in terms of two quantum numbers. We give you the N value and the L value, and these two things together are called an orbital designation. So I say, what kind of orbital subshell has N equals three and L is equal to two? Um, the way we describe these orbitals that the, the electron lives in is um, we, we put the N value in front and then we convert the L value to the letter uh, form of it. So remember, when L is equal to 2, we're talking about a D orbital. So when an orbital has N equals 3, L is equal to 2, we're talking about a 3D orbital. So you can see why we convert um, L values into a letter so that we can, um, you know, we don't want two numbers right next to each other. So we don't want to call it like a, a 3, 2 orbital. So we convert the L values into letters and it makes things a little bit easier to understand. So this is a 3D orbital and that tells me um, pretty much all the information I need to uh, understand what's going on with this particular electron.